Hi, welcome to my channel yet again. Um, today I'm going to be bringing you my five star review of The Fuck It List by John Niven. Um, this book comes out, has came out in March. Um, I'm on the blog tour for it. Um, this book was so perfect. It was unreal. It was so good. Now, you wouldn't like to think that it's possible to live in a world where dystopian traits and storylines could even be fathomable in everyday life. But this book has nailed at home just how much we are living in a dystopian novel. This book is based in America um, a couple of years in the future. <sighs> Donald Trump has served two terms, which, you know, we're looking at now. Um, he sacked off Pence, his vice president, um, about 18 months before his second term was up. And put in post his daughter Ivanka. So therefore she just went on and became president and I just can't say how much that thought depresses me. We're living in a, we're living in a dystopian novel. So the timeline's moved on, it's around about 2022, 2024. Um, and things are grim, really, really grim. Human rights? Do you want them? Do you? Do you really? Well, you're not got any more now. The um, it's scary. It's really scary. Um, you're looking at not being able to take a video not being able to take any any photographic evidence of of the Trump administration, any government buildings, any police officers or military going about their work. So that means if you've witnessed an assault or you've witnessed something that's not quite kosher with any of that administration, you can't film it, you can't document it, and you certainly can't put it on social media. There has been a law passed that is called the Extreme Patriot Act and you can't. You will be arrested, you will be fined, your phone will be taken off you. You won't get it back for between four and six weeks. You've got to give the arresting officer your social media account details. So that's your username, that's your password. And they can do whatever the hell they like. We're living in a world, well, in the book that is, we are living in a world where, we're living in a world where, um, where censorship is, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Um, you can forget about it, absolutely forget about it. And it's frightening. This is this is a book where this sort of thing shouldn't be normal. You know, looking at next to no gun regulation laws, um, abortion becoming fully, fully illegal. I mean, that thought as well really frightens me. There, there's just no human rights at all. Um, you know... The school teachers are expected to arm themselves uh, instead of actually introducing some really effective gun either prohibition or, you know, legislation that that stops. I mean, just Americans being able to, to hold a mini gun. That isn't protecting yourself. That is quite frightening. Um, anyway, um... Don't want to get too political, but this is what the book focuses on, um, and it's frightening. It really is frightening. Um, so we have our main prota protagonist, um, Frank Brill, 
Bill, Brill, yeah, um, who's had a really, really crap life. God, this guy has really had, a, had it bad. Um, he's had three wives and two children. Now, he's, he's not been the best husband to the wives. He fully admits that. He's got two kids. Yeah, I'm not going to say any more about that. Um, and now he's been diagnosed with non-operable cancer. So he decides to ask the doctor um, how long he'll have before he clocks it, basically. Without treatment, the doctor assumes between three and six months. So he goes for the non-treatment route. The doctor's the doctor tries to convince him that it would be best for him to try and get treatment, radio radiotherapy, um, radio, yeah. Um, but he refuses. He has no family left. He doesn't see that he's got anybody that cares for him. So he just goes down the route where he doesn't want treatment. He wants to end his life on his own terms. And that's admirable. I mean, who doesn't want that? Who wants to be being sick every day, losing their hair, being exhausted beyond belief? I wouldn't want that. But it's something that I would do for my family, not necessarily for myself. Um, but yes, that's the route he goes down. And he decides to complete his fuck it list. I mean, who wants to do the bucket list? That is so last century, right? <laughs> yeah. The fuck it list is getting his own back on anybody that's ever wronged him or wronged somebody he loves. And it gets messy real quick. And it's amazing. I can't even explain. It's amazing, the idea of a fuck it list. Um... He just goes out there and he just kicks ass. Kicks ass. And he knows that he's not treated his wife's right. And he sees it as kind of like karma for him. But he wants to dish out karma to those that have wronged him in some way or another. It's fab. I can't even explain it. It's, it's edge of your seat stuff. This is what Edge of Your Seat Word was invented for. This is the type of book we're talking about. Um, it blew my mind and I really couldn't put it down. Um, obviously, I have children and stuff and we are in quarantine. So I got it done in about 24 hours. Um, if the kids had been at school, it would probably be done in an afternoon. But needs must apparently they need fed more than once a day. <laughs> um. So, yeah, absolutely, it's compelling, it's, you know, it verges a little bit on the political side, it is a political novel, but, but all the other elements mixed in, his writing ability, his, his, just being able to capture an audience, it's just, it's just outstanding, it was definitely a five star read for me, um, um, Oh, absolutely outstanding. Um, he's just nailed the whole idea of the Trump stick. Excuse me, the Trump staying in power. The everything, everything. Seriously, you need to go and read this. If you're a lover of thrillers of any kind, um, this will be right down your alley. Um, there's great characters in it. You know, he's. There's like a small town sheriff that ends up on Frank's heels and travels through states to catch up with him. And it's a great idea. I mean, the, sh the sheriff is bent as hell, but somehow it works. He gets his own level of karma. And I actually laughed. I know I shouldn't, but I laughed. It was amazing. Please, please read this. Um, it was great. Absolutely great. So that's that. That's for me. That's my review. Um, if you enjoyed this, I know I'm still gibberish and I'm still rattling on and this is only my second video so I hope you forgive me. Um, please hit subscribe. 
um, and if you want to be notified of my videos please hit the bell um, but until the next time take care bye